Okay, so today we're going to be learning about what's called modular arithmetic. And I know that these are some pretty big, scary words, but don't worry, it's a pretty simple concept to understand. So the word modular comes from modulus, which has a Latin root meaning measure. So I like to think of um, modular arithmetic as like taking the big, not long number line from uh, negative infinity to infinity and using a ruler of set length starting at zero to divide it into chunks. And each chunk repeats in the exact same manner each time. This is a common theme we'll be saying is repetition, like a repeating cycle in mod. So the most basic concept behind mod, you guys are already familiar with. It has to do with uh, when you're doing long division and you get a remainder because the number doesn't evenly go into uh, the, the number that you're dividing into. And so we would say in elementary school that 40 divided by three equals 13 remainder one. Well, if we're using modular, we would say 40 is congruent to one mod three. So you set the number equal to the remainder. There are a lot of examples of ways that you've probably encountered mod in your life already. Um, one of the most simple to understand is even and odd numbers. So um, we all know the even numbers, two, four, six, uh, and so on, have a remainder of zero when divided by two. Um, all the odd numbers have a remainder of one when divided by two. And so the even numbers are congruent to zero mod two, odd are congruent to one mod two. So again, we can think of our number line and like above each number, we have alternating ones and zeros, this repetitive uh, measure that we were talking about earlier. And so we can say that Z2, the set of remainders mod two is zero and one. And this is the notation that um, is commonly used in modular arithmetic. Um, another example that um, I am really familiar with is in music. I don't know if you guys have ever had the experience of playing a boring piece where the composer writes this sign, which means just repeat the previous measure, but that is the same idea um, as mod. And I, I think a better example that more people can relate to is when you're listening to a song and you all start clapping on two and four. Like, um, you're not actually clapping on two and four each time because the beats continually count higher. But you say clap on two and four and then repeat. So you forget about six, eight, uh, 10, 12, and so on and just call them all two and four. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through some of the notation that we use when we talk about uh, modular arithmetic because that tends to trip people up a lot when they think about math. So here we have a is congruent to b mod m and a is any integer, negative, positive, it doesn't matter. Um, b is uh, our remainder when we divide by m so it's greater than or equal to zero and strictly less than m. And then m is our divisor so it's what we divide a by to get b. Now from this congruence, we can actually conclude that a minus b is congruent to zero mod m, and that therefore a minus b is some multiple of m, so m times some integer, let's call it p. Um, the way that we can figure this out is that we say that m, or that a is gonna be m times some integer uh, a sub zero plus r, and b is going to be m times another integer, b sub zero, plus that same r. So when we take a minus b, our r's cancel out, and we get something that is divisible by m. Now this is a really important property of uh, modular congruences, and we're going to touch on this in later videos. Okay, so something really important to note at this point is that equals and congruent are actually not the same thing. They're very different. Although they're both equivalence relations, which means that they have some similar properties, but they mean completely different things and they have to do with different sets of numbers. 
which is why four is congruent to 10 mod three, but four does not equal 10. Okay, so a question that we might wanna ask next is, does algebra work? Does our basic laws of algebra work in the modulus world? Um, to answer this question, I wanna look at modulus two, because that's what most people are most comfortable with. And in that, um, I'm sure that you've been told since you were little that an even plus an even is an even, even plus odd is odd, odd plus odd is even, and then there's uh, the same rules with multiplication. So even times even is even, even times odd is even, and odd times odd is odd. Well, this kind of rule for um, various numbers with certain remainders actually works for any modulus. And we can see this if we consider um, modulus three. So this one's slightly uh, less comfortable for people, but we know that in Z3, so that there's that notation again, we have remainders, possible remainders zero, one, and two. And let's consider uh, any remainder multiplied by the remainder zero. Uh, we get zero, no matter what we multiply by zero, obviously. And that's all congruent to zero mod three. Um, a way to kind of understand this beyond just the, the equations is that uh, any, any number that, has, that is congruent to zero mod three uh, has three as a factor, and so we multiply that by whatever, and then three is still a factor, so the number is still divisible by three. Um, and in the same way, we can figure out uh, what happens when we don't uh, have zero in our multiplication. So we can figure out one times one is congruent to one mod three, one times two is congruent to two mod three, and then two times two is actually congruent to one mod three because four is congruent to one. Um, and then this same sort of technique by just adding the remainders works for addition as well. So you guys can do that on your own or for other modulus if you want. Um, so this tells us that yes, we can use algebra in the modulus world, which is really cool because algebra is such a useful tool in math that now we can use it in like another respect than just the integers. Um, so I want you to consider this equation right here. X plus two is congruent to three mod four. We can just solve it by subtracting two from each side and then we get X is congruent to one mod four. Uh, same thing if we have subtraction, X minus two is congruent to one mod four. Add two to both sides and X is congruent to three mod four. Um, so this is like a very useful technique and uh, we'll talk about this in later videos. These are actually called linear Diophantine equations. So big words coming up. Um, some question, I, a question that I have to leave you guys with is um, how do we do division in the modular world? So consider 2x is congruent to 1 mod 4. Uh, we can't divide by two because then we get one half and one half is not an integer so it doesn't exist in the mod world so um yeah that's my question how do you solve this we'll go over this next time and i appreciate you all for watching this video i'm super excited to to share my love for mod with you guys